My name is Stefan Seele, the CEO of Coliago Consulting, and I'm going to talk to you today about effective spectrum planning and pricing in the context of 5G. So looking here at slide one, I simply present a few policy statements from the European Union, so an advanced market and also a developing market where regulators and policymakers recognize the importance of 5G for the socio-economic development of their countries. So that is the acceptance. So how do we ensure that spectrum pricing doesn't get in the way of fulfilling that objective? 5G has already been launched in a number of countries. In fact, 81 commercial launches in 42 uh, countries. So it's continuing at a fast pace. So 5G is not for the future. It's actually here today. Uh, as we can see on slide three, the main bands are uh, 700 megahertz, that's band N28, and we also have the three gigahertz band, which is the main capacity band for 5G, also referred to as a C band. There have been some launches in millimeter wave, 24 gigahertz and above, but most of that is really for fixed wireless access. So looking at slide four, we can see the ecosystem is evolving at a different pace in different bands. So uh, we can see here that a lot of launches have in fact been in 700 megahertz, 3500 megahertz, but also in a few other bands uh, in countries where the 700 or indeed the C band is not available. But I'd like to stress that in fact 5G is specified for all bands, so it is available and will come out in most phones uh, in a short period of time. One of the main reasons, and this is slide five, why we need additional spectrum is of course that the smartphone traffic and other traffic as well is increasing tremendously by depending on the country or region by a factor of three to six. And in order to do that, 5G technology alone is not sufficient. One needs additional substantial amounts of spectrum. But the problem is spectrum has to be paid for and revenue is not increasing. So what we have seen is that the revenues operator generate per megahertz of spectrum has declined in the past. And if we bring more spectrum into play for 5G, the revenue per megahertz of spectrum will decline even further. So the implication is if less revenue is generated per megahertz of spectrum, therefore license fees per megahertz of spectrum need to decline or 5G is not sustainable. Looking at slide seven, uh, I'd simply present a, a simple uh, version to understand that there needs to be a return on investment. We have seen margins declining, mobile operators margins declining in almost all markets and yet capital employed, i.e. form of the network as well as spectrum has increased, therefore return on investment has declined. And it's not an attractive industry anymore, but if you want 5G, you need to attract investment into the industry. So we have developed a methodology, and I outlined this here on page eight, which looks at the cost of spectrum in relation to mobile operator revenue. And we do this at industry level. So we look at how much has been paid for spectrum in the past because that's sitting in the balance sheet and is a cost. We convert that into an annualized cost using an annuity format. If there are annual fees, we add this and we can then calculate the annualized cost of spectrum as a percentage of revenue. On slide nine, I show the result uh, from 13 European countries. We've done that for the European Commission because they were concerned that excessive spectrum pricing is holding up 5G development in the European Union. We can see here there's quite a range from 1% in Finland and Latvia to 17% in Hungary. So the question is, is there really some evidence that if spectrum fees are low, then 5G development and mobile broadband development will be better. And the answer is yes. So on the next slide, here, slide 10, you can see some evidence. Finland, as you saw, one of the lowest 
fees in the world. And what we can see, the usage is in fact far higher than in other European countries, 34 gigabytes compared to an average of eight. So this means that consumers and businesses making use of mobile broadband get way better values. So if you take traffic as a proxy for socioeconomic benefit being generated, then in Finland, users are getting four times what they're getting in other European countries. And indeed, three out of the uh, four best mobile networks in terms of capacity to grow, according to an independent survey, are in Finland. So, as you can see, lower spectrum license fee, higher network investment, which generates socioeconomic value. There's also another methodology you can use as a check to look at this, and this is the spectrum price index. Here, we are simply looking at the spectrum license fees that are being paid. We divide that by uh, average revenue per user and multiply that by the number of subscribers, in other words, revenue. And what we have seen is that the spectrum price index has declined over time, and so it should, because we use ever more spectrum to generate roughly the same amount of revenue. So looking at the charts here on, on page slide 12, you can see that the spectrum price index for 3G was uh, up to about 6, it went down to up to about 4 uh, for 4G, and from the early 5G auctions we have seen the prices that were paid the spectrum price index is in fact smaller than two, mostly with some exceptions and where these exceptions occur we've got a problem. On the next chart here, spectrum price index uh, as a control point for 5G rollout, we can clearly see that there is a problem if prices are too high. India and Thailand are prime examples. In India they could have had 5G by now had they sold the 700 megahertz spectrum, but they haven't sold it because their prices were ridiculously high with a spectrum price index of 26, when it should have been somewhere in the region of 4, uh, at least for 4G. And of course, as you know, the 700 megahertz band can be used both for 4G and 5G. So that is clearly a problem. So uh, the recommendation then for regulators is uh, to ensure that you have a successful 5G industry is to encourage investment in 5G and avoid taking excessive amounts out in terms of spectrum fees. Mobile uh, revenue or mobile service revenue is not increasing only very marginally if new applications are being launched but essentially it remains the same and that's good because consumers are getting value from it. But 5G requires much more spectrum and so uh, the revenue per megahertz of spectrum will decline and you must ensure that license fees decline in proportion. So how can you do that? You, uh, and I'm looking here at slide 15, you quantify the annual mobile operator service revenue for the whole industry you ascertain the revenue evolution for the next 10 years. You might look back what it was in the past, what is the trend. You'll probably find there's a very small increase perhaps in the neighborhood of 2% uh, per annum. Uh, and then you look at the spectrum roadmap. You look at uh, what spectrum you want to license, maybe what reserve prices need to be set. You look at what prices has been paid in the past. And you can then compare the annualized cost of spectrum as a percentage of revenue and make sure it doesn't go above, let's say, 5% or something like that. As we have seen, once it goes above 10, you really have a problem. If you are below 5%, then it is likely that operators will invest and you'll have an excellent 5G service for your consumers and businesses. In addition, you could use the Spectrum Price in Index uh, to have a check that your 5G related spectrum prices are significantly lower than the 4G related spectrum prices. 
So if you uh, would like further information on this, please send me an email. I'm now looking at the last slide, slide 16, with my address, stefan.seele at coliago.com, and I can send you some further information on the annualized cost of spectrum methodology. Thank you very much. Thank you.